basic stocking and some simple embellishments to make it your own. And the technique of constructing this stocking is really like a lot of bag patterns that you would find. And the great thing about it is we will have no raw edges anywhere, inside, outside, anywhere showing on the stocking. So what you're gonna do is you need two pieces for your lining fabric, two pieces for your outer fabric, and then two pieces of this fusible fleece. And I happen to love fusible fleece. I use it in bags all the time. Even if the pattern doesn't call for it, I'll put a little bit in the strap of a bag and it makes it really cushiony on your shoulder. It's just a really great product and I happen to love it. You can see it's fusible on one side. So once you've fused it to the fabric, it's not going anywhere. The fabric acts as one. Um, but if you don't happen to have any fusible fleece and you have some batting on hand, maybe from a leftover quilt project or something like that, you can certainly substitute some batting. And I have it right here to show you. And you wanna get some kind of spray adhesive. Some temporary spray adhesive is probably preferable just so that if anything goes wrong, you can reposition it really easily. But you just give it a light spray and then position it. And it's gonna act pretty much the same way as fusible fleece. You could see though that I've chosen a pretty low loft batting here. If you have something really, really thick, I would stick with the fusible fleece. You could see the differences here. It's just easier to sew, easier to work with once we get all the layers going on with this project. And since I have not fused these yet, I'm actually just going to use some temporary spray adhesive now so that I can get through the project instructions for you. But obviously I would use an iron and you wanna really take your time with the iron and follow the manufacturer's instructions it's just like interfacing. You don't wanna move the iron around a lot while you're positioning it or it'll shift. So you wanna just press down with your iron in small areas until the whole thing is fused. And just in the interest of time and things I have on this table, I'll just spray it here. Spray adhesive is another one of those things that I happen to absolutely love in the sewing room. I use it all the time. I don't use many fabric glues, but because I like to sew everything that I can, but I don't consider spray adhesive as a cheat at all. I think it just helps you. Okay, so once those are one, these are our outer fabrics. These are our lining. We're also going to have to cut a little piece for our hanging loop here. It's just a little rectangle of fabric. And we're gonna work with that next. Let me get rid of this pattern. You're gonna take your loop, fold it in half lengthwise, right sides together. And you're just gonna sew this long edge. And I use a pretty narrow seam allowance, an eighth or a quarter inch. And then you're gonna turn it right side out. Use a little tube turner, something like this with a blunt end so you don't go through the seam. And then you're gonna have your little tube. And what I've done is I've pressed the seam towards the center and that's gonna hide it once we've turned it over as our loop. So turn it over like that. We're gonna put it on one of our lining pieces. And I just kind of eyeball this about, oh, an inch from the edge, inch and a half. Match up your raw edges, pin it in place. And we're gonna work with one back and one front. Let's see, that's the other thing. You wanna make sure you have a front and a back of each one. So when you're cutting it out, make sure that you flip the pattern over to get your other side. Okay, so we're gonna go right sides together and we're just stitching this upper edge 
which is going to enclose that seam for the handle. Just back stitch a little bit. And then you can feel when you get over the handle, I back stitch over that too, just to give it some extra reinforcement. threads there. Okay, so now we have one side of the stocking done. You can remove your pin now. And you could see I pinned far enough away from the seam allowance so I knew I wasn't going to hit that pin when I sewed. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other pair. And there are a lot of different ways to make stockings. Sometimes you finish this upper edge the very last step. But a lot of the times it's hard to get a really clean finish that way. So I like to do it this way. And if you have used a batting or something a little bit loftier than this fusible fleece, you're going to want to probably lessen your presser foot uh, tension, or presser foot pressure, I should say. That'll just lift things up a little bit, make it easier to sew. Okay, so now we have front, front, lining, lining, and it's just as simple as putting them right sides together. matching up everything. And really the most important thing to match up right here are these two seams. So I really, really make sure those are touching. If anything else is off, you can certainly trim it up later. And I mean, it's a stocking. And this is a pretty big, good size one. So you're not gonna worry, you're not gonna have the worry of not being able to get your hand in there or enough goodies in there. It'll hold a lot. Now we're just going to sew the entire perimeter of this and we're going to leave a little opening in the bottom of the lining seam and that's going to allow us to turn it right side out. So I actually start down there so that I can start and stop at my opening and back stitch really good. Just ease it around the curve. No need to pivot or anything. is a little bit off, which is why it looks like my seam allowance just got wider, but it's really just when I sprayed that fleece on there, it was a little askew. I'm just going to make sure that I'm on track here. And that's the good thing about the temporary spray adhesive is you could just see how I could just lift it up there and readjust it. But of course, if you would have fused it, you would have made sure that it's perfectly aligned. And you can see you're really just learning a method here that you can apply to bags and such. You've probably made a bag this way where you do, you sew the two fronts together and you leave the opening in the lining. And 
And this is one point where I am gonna pivot because I'm at the little notch here of the stocking. Just leave my needle in the fabric. Except it just came out, but you get the idea. Here I am again at this point in the stocking. Leave my needle in, pivot, go around. This is the point where you need to remember about your opening. I kind of wait until I'm on the straight end of the stocking, back stitch, trim up my threads. And then we have this super long stocking. Now, I don't really ever bother clipping the curves, grading the seams, but you certainly could do that. And uh, you could see where I was talking about that my fleece got a little wider than the rest of my fabric. So I am going to trim that up just because it's, it's the fleece and it's going to be a little bit bulkier. I want to make sure it's nice, especially around the top edge. So you could certainly come in here and put a little clip right there at the corners. Like I said, I generally skip this step, but I am a little off down here too, so I'll just trim it up. Make sure those are really nice and even. You could see just how easy it is to sew this. So taking a little extra time and doing these little, you know, finishing touches really doesn't add any time or stress to your sewing. Okay, now we're gonna turn the whole thing right side out through our little opening. At this point, I would give it a good press. And you can use your point turner and really get your corners and your seams and your curves and everything nice and crisp. Now we are going to close up the opening. And if you really, really want it to be absolutely perfect, you can hand sew this shut just with a little whip stitch or slip stitch and you won't see anything. But since it's all the way inside of the stocking and nobody's ever going to see it, I just go ahead and top stitch it really close to the edge there, catching both of the folds of the opening and the stitching. still have no raw edges, so it still looks nice. And now what we're gonna do is stuff the lining into the outer stocking. And you can feel around in there and make sure that your seams are aligned. And again, a good press is gonna help you out with this also. And you 
just make sure that your upper edge, you can favor the upper edge a little bit to push your lining a little bit farther in there if you like, or you can bring it all the way out and you can actually even show it as a cute little detail to see the inside fabric. And I always put my loop towards the wall when I'm hanging it so that the rest of it is open, easily accessible. And that is the general idea of the stocking. You can certainly just, you know, pick cute fabrics and leave it at that. Or you can embellish it, which again, it's so, so easy that you might as well add a little personalization to it. So here what I've done is I just added a little bit of this pom-pom fringe. So who doesn't like pom-pom fringe? So cute. And what you wanna do is before you, when you have your long tubes, you'll place your pom-pom fringe between the two outer fabrics and pin it really good in place. And then I install a zipper foot on the machine and move my needle as close to this tape edge as possible. And then when you're sewing the whole thing, your trim gets captured in the outer fabrics and really, really easy. For the ends, I just fold them in a little bit to hide the raw edges and they're perfectly enclosed in that seam. So you can experiment with that, and pom-pom fringe comes in this jumbo variety, or it comes in little baby pom-poms, which is really, really cute also, and tons of different colors of it. And then here is an idea for adding some applique, and this is actually just raw edge applique, really, really simple, just fused it on here with some fusible web, and then did a straight stitch about three times around each element. You could do a tree, you could do a snowman, you can do some letters of somebody's name. Really cute idea. And then this one, the front is all pieced together. You can see the back is totally plain. After all, it's going against the wall or the mantle or whatever, so why bother? Just make the front really cute. I've pieced together all these fabrics and then I decided to do a little bit of quilting. And this is just channel quilted. Um, you know, you can use an adjustable guide presser foot and ensure that your lines are all symmetrical. Um, I just winged it. As you can see, some of them are a little bit off, but I kind of like that look, especially with this fabric combination. So you can really do whatever you want. You can outline quilt, you can stitch in the ditch. Um, you know, just have fun with it. And it is really cute to do it a couple of different ways. And then you have all kinds of, you know, a fun array hanging on your mantle at Christmas time.